Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Behind the Voices with Derek Stephen Prince. And now, your guest, relationship and NPL coach, speaker, author, and international speaker, and voice actor extraordinaire, Mr. Spike Spencer. And there we are. <laughs> How you doing? You want to lie down after that, man? No, I'm, I'm good. Whew. Whew. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Ah, My goodness! And word. and and I, I and I, I I left out almost one of the most important things, chef extraordinaire. Ah, yes. well, yes. that that's actually coming. We'll talk about oh. that. But uh, <laughs> oh. yeah, you are a man of many hats, my friend. A man of yep. many, many many hats indeed. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm like, I'm like a cat. I've lived uh, several <laughs> lives, man. <laughs> But every time you come back, it's like you're even better than you were before. Well, you know, you can't keep a good man down. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, dude, it is so good to see you. Good to be seen, my man. How are you? I, I am doing very well. Very, very well indeed. I, I have been looking forward to this day for a long time just so i can chat with you about all the stuff that you've been up to recently because it's been a while since you and i've talked probably you know like at least on the phone anyway it's been a while yeah like a couple of years I mean, when, when was it you came over um Dude, that... we had you over for dinner with uh with ginger and yeah. uh, we talked real estate back in six seven <laughs> Something oh, no, wait. kim was there too right <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 I was there. So this was 2013, I think. 2012, 2013, or something like that. So, yeah. Man, it has been a wild ride since then. She and it I have been has... together now for eight years. I know. Congratulations. What? And we got a three year old boy. I... It's amazing. It is amazing. For those of you guys who are here because you only know Spike as far as being a voice actor, obviously. Mr. Spencer yeah. has been in the following, including Bonju Stray Dogs, the franchise, as uh, Jurichu Tanizaki. Hopefully I pronounced yep, that yep, correctly. Yep. I don't know. Uh, I don't either. Lego Friends. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. As yeah. Hobo. Naruto slash Boruto as Inogen Yamanaka, as mm -hmm. well as many others. Black Butler as Snake. Bleach as Hanataro Yamada. Hanataro. Hanataro yep. Yamada. Evangelion. I, I got us. It's Evangelion. Evangelion. As Shinji. Yes, sir. Ikari. In which, from the research that I did, I, I'm not sure. They, they probably need to update their research since they actually wrote this, which was way, 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 way back. But who, who wrote that? I don't remember where I got this information from because I did. I was looking on a whole bunch of different sites. But apparently, you are one of the most beloved anime characters as Shinji, like, ever. Interesting enough, it was it was voted. I remember there was an article. Uh, I forgot what, uh, who did it, but they they voted Shinji as the number one anime character of all time. This was like, I don't know, three four years ago. I was like, well, that's cool. Wow, <laughs> right? Didn't change my life any, but right. it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were actually in one of my favorite shows. Yeah, a very very not well known anime, and I don't even know where you can even find this title nowadays if, if it's yeah. available somewhere online or if it's available on dvd but mare um Mare, yeah. yes which was amazing to work on yeah oh i love that that was one of the first ones that i did when i got out to la yeah. with uh, pcb and that's when i got to really got to know them real well and uh, i was there quite a bit for for a while during the those days and uh, it was so much fun i was like ah. And they're like, oh, there's another season, and then nothing. I yeah, like, oh. I know. It just went... It was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Mare, for those of you guys who are, are not familiar with the anime title, it's actually an acronym standing for Martian Awakens Romance. There you go. Another one of those Japanese titles that makes no damn sense. Right? Exactly. I do, <laughs> I do have to ask you about this, because okay. I'm assuming this happened after you came out to 
Los Angeles. Now, you, I know that you went to college in Texas, right? Yeah. When did you actually come out to Los Angeles? How long ago was that? So I moved to Los Angeles in 2005. 2005. On, yeah, and I, I rolled in on May 8th, 2005. You remember the exact day. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely. I don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I have to ask yeah. you this because this happened very shortly after you moved out here. Not too long after. Mm -hmm. So I noticed <laughs> that you not only were you a voice actor, but you were also a live action actor for a while, mm -hmm. right? You were on the Chelsea yeah. Handler yeah. show? That happened, <laughs> yeah. That was the, the first gig I got when I was uh, out in L.A., yeah. That was... Uh, like one of the only on-camera gigs I've gotten, I got in LA. Yeah. Wow. But hey, that was it's still, fun. But it's still Chelsea Handler, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a fun gig. We were doing a spoof of Ty Pennington from the home shows, right. and the one where he they redo the the house and everything. And uh, yeah, we did a spoof on that, and so I got to play him. <laughs> oh, that's fun. You know, so and it was very funny. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a very funny. You can find it on YouTube. I'm sure it's there. Chelsea Handler, right? Home. Whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> now, I could say he's a chronic alcoholic who suffers from cirrhosis of the liver, but he's really more of a dusty, dirty, foul, filthy, grungy, grimy, stinky, smelly, angry old drunk. And then you were in Miss Congeniality. Well, here's, here's the thing. So before I moved out to L.A., things were starting to happen in Houston. So my, my career on camera was happening. I had done about five films oh, wow. in the course of a couple of years there. And I've had scenes on camera with four Academy Award nominees. That's two of them won. Amazing. Scenes with, scenes with them. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Miss Congeniality, I had a scene with Sandra. I worked with her for two days. Mm -hmm. Never met her. Yeah. But had scenes with her. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know the drill. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're on camera, they've got somebody else right. sitting there reading the script. Then they turn the cameras on them, and then she's there, and then it's like, cut. And she's like, I'm like, but I never met you. Right. But I worked with her. I worked with Tommy Lee Jones. Um, he cast me in a film uh, and directed me in The Three Burials of Melchiedis Estrada. Oh, wow. I know. You saw it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But the screenplay was up for an Academy Award that year. And then I worked with Frank Langella on a film that some of these, some people watching this might know. It was a Disney film called Now You See It with uh, Allison Mishalka and uh, Johnny Pacer, I want to say his name was. But, you know, dude, five weeks in New Orleans with Frank Langella. Dude, that's amazing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and then the other one was uh, Alan Bates oh, wow. uh, back in the day. This is, this is like in the, back in the 80s. Right. But, you know, that's what you do when you're in Houston. You are you do everything. You do voiceover, radio. You do sure. uh, industrial films, anything and everything. And they're shooting films in Austin, Dallas, New Orleans, Shreveport. So you're driving all the time to auditions and, you know, four hours, six hours. And people are like, I've got to go from uh, Burbank over to Marina Del Rey. I'm like going, I went to New Orleans leaving at 6 a.m., auditioned and turned around and came back. That's 12 hours on the road. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and you're crying so, about what? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, really? What? So when you were, so, when you were still in Texas, is that when you started your voiceover career? Did you work with Funimation or Ocatron or any of those peeps? No, this was all before. Um, so I was there back in the, uh, the nineties, okay. uh, which was, I was doing a live action film with Amanda Wynn Lee and that's how we met. Mm. And, uh, she was like, you do all these crazy voices and fun stuff. You know, you gotta come over to ADV. I'm, I'm directing over there. I was like, okay, cool. We'll do some, some, some Japanese anime. I'm like, anime. What's that? <laughs> like cartoons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she's like, not really. <laughs> I said, does it pay? And she said, yes. I said, great, I'm there. Let's go. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I went over and I auditioned. And the first role I ever got was Super Atragon. Mm. And I played a, uh, I don't know, lieutenant or something, corporal, I don't know. Yeah. Some military thing. And then uh, I think it was Swicoden and Takateru and then Evangelion, I think, was like the third thing I got. And this was back when ADV had one studio. Mm. So, and ADV over the course of the next, you know, several years, they had like 13 studios, two buildings, et cetera. And so I did a lot of work there. So the, the majority of my early work was all AD Vision. Uh, Funimation didn't exist uh, when I was there, uh, as far as I knew. Then I don't know when they came around, but I never went up to Funimation uh, until after I moved to LA. Mm -hmm. And then they picked up Evangelion and then I flew back there to, to do that. But uh, yeah, so I went to LA and 
did voiceover and survived on that for the most part for 15 years. Yeah. And here's what a lot of people don't know about you. And I do because I've done my research. Yes. So before you were even an actor, before it was even a thought in your head, I, 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 I believe you actually mm -hmm. started off as an entrepreneur, didn't you? No. No? Because I, no. I read a story about you as an 11-year-old. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Where I've you... No, you have to tell everybody. You have to tell them. Okay. <laughs> I was, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, yes. I mean, I started out young, you know, selling the lemonade and stuff. Or we would we would go and wash cars, knocking on windows, you know, we'll do cars or I'll, I'll mow your lawn, that sort of thing. Yes. You know, the typical stuff yes. we did when we were kids, uh, you know, back when you could do that. Right. Um, but tell your sticker story. Now, tell your sticker story. Yeah. So what I did was my my cousin was a, a BMX uh, racer. So, you know, they they you know the pedal bikes and just run and do all the crazy jumps and all that. Really amazing. He was really good. And so I went to see that and they were giving away all these stickers. So the BMX and you know, mongoose and all this cool stuff. I was like, that's cool. So I was like, wait a minute, they're free and I saw other people selling them. Uh huh. And I was like, uh <laughs> So I went and got as many free ones as I could get. <laughs> And so I got them all, and then uh, I put them in this neat binder and everything, and I took it to school with me, and I had like, here's the small ones, these are a dollar, these are two dollars, these are five, and this one's twenty dollars, you know. And uh, so I would go around and say, hey, man, you guys like to, you like, you like, oh, I see you like BMX, hey, check this out. <laughs> you want any of these? You know. So Dude, you did it up. I did that, and I was like. Yeah, and so I sold them all. I was like, well, that was really cool. And then I had, for some reason, they also gave candy, and I had, like, Jolly Ranchers. And I was, like, selling them for a dime. I was like, oh, and I have some of these, too. I'm like, yeah, I'll take some of those, man. Cool. So I'm like, holy crap. Uh -oh. <laughs> so now I've got this lot of cash, and I'm like, how do I turn this into more of this? Right. And um, I saw another kid who, who was kind of selling candy. And I was like, okay. So I went. And I found this store and I got like 10 cents for like Reese's, mm. you know, or something like mm -hmm. that. It was, a, it was a knockoff of that. It was like Mallow Cups or right. whatever. <laughs> and it was like a dime. So I grabbed those for a dime. I got a bunch of those and put them in a bag and I went and sold them <laughs> for 50 cents a piece. And I was like, talk about markup. Right? What? Right? That's a 400% markup. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I kept doing it. And I did that for a while. And, uh, you know, the teachers would take my candy away. Next day, I came back. I had my bag. I'm like, you will not stop progress. <laughs> and, uh, and through that, I ended up uh, being uh, in my junior achievement in, in high school. I was in junior achievement. I was like the vice president of marketing the first year. And then I was the president the next year. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's something that I have wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Going back in time. We are back in March, March or April, whenever it was. Okay. And you guys are in Australia. You're at a convention. You're having a grand old time bringing your, thank God you brought your family with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the way that that all lined up. And then. Yeah. Boom. Like, oh. Like what? How, like what? How? What? How did you? What? What was the react? The initial reaction from all you guys? Like, oh crap! What are we gonna do now? Well, let me tell you, that was not the initial reaction. But I'm I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm gonna add a little. I'm gonna add a little coaching into this. Do okay? it. Do it. <laughs> I manifested all of this. Did you really? Okay. Yep. Okay. Let me show you. So. Uh, a lot of the training I do is uh, – so I, I was tra trained in NLP plus uh, bank code personality stuff. So we've got some certifications, and Kim is even a uh, certified high-performance coach with Brendan Burchard, who is Oprah's coach. That's awesome. So, so not, not to, not to we, time out really quick, but just, just so that people know what you're talking about. When you say NLP – Neuro Linguistic Programming. Thank you. Um, it is a, it's basically, it's the study of excellence and breaking it down. It's the baseline for all of, uh, like Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. uh, stuff. That's how he got started. Yep. And, uh, we were trained by the people that train his people anyway. 
So, but I do a lot of subconscious work, uh, and you know, I'm always doing doing the work. And so, I was really, really focusing on success and and figuring everything out. And out of freaking nowhere, we get I get an invite back to Supernova. And you you've been down here, mm-hmm. right? I I have not been to that part of Australia, no. Okay, but I've but been to Australia. Been, yes. But you've been to Supernova, though. No, never. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll introduce you. So. <laughs> Um, what they do with Supernova, I did. I did Supernova years ago, like two thousand seven or eight. I did Supernova, and they do two cities. They do Melbourne. Uh, it was like I did Melbourne and Brisbane one year, and then like six months later, we did Sydney and Perth. And the cool thing about Supernova is you're with all kinds of stars. I mean, you meet. Oh yeah. All kinds of amazing people. And it's yeah. a kind of like a family. If you all connect, it's like a family going to the next, you know, we all go to the next place and we're all like, oh, we're having, you know, we're getting to know people. And right. so, and I had not been asked back in over 10 years. It had not been on my radar. I mean, I've been to Australia for different conventions, but Supa hadn't invited me in a while. And I know Daniel, I know everybody real well. And I was just like, I don't know what's going on there, but I was doing the work. And suddenly it was like, boom, out of nowhere, here's an invite. I'm like, okay, here's all my rates, here's my family, and it's all boom. And it's like, yep, you're good. Come on. All right. Wow. So wow. We, all, we all go to, to Melbourne, and um, we have a great time there. Oh, great foodie town, by the way. Oh, my God. <sighs> so good. Uh, and then we had a great time. And, oh, by the way, our, our best, our favorite winery is, is in the Mornington Peninsula now south of Melbourne. It's called Point Leo. Mm-hmm. Um mm. And we then we so we all go up to the Gold Coast, which is we're just south of Brisbane. So we all fly up here, and just as we pull in to the Gold Coast, Tom Hanks announces that he has COVID, and he was literally blocks away from us. And so it was like we're in the epicenter, and we're like, "Well, this is crazy." <laughs> and what's even crazier, what's even crazier is I was appearing with Spike from Buffy, mm-hmm. uh, one of the witches from Charmed. And members of The Walking Dead. And then the pandemic. I'm like, well, this is zomberific. <laughs> and so we're here for the week, you know, and we do the convention. The convention, thank goodness, did not get canceled. It it was a lot lower in attendance. It was one of the best conventions I've ever mm-hmm. done. I was like, I'm good. And it's like manifesting, manifesting, manifesting. And we... So here we are in the Gold Coast, and we're, we're looking around, we're like going, I we really like the Gold Coast. It's hmm, I've never been here before, and I've been to every major city in Australia, and it was just amazing. And uh, Kim's parents had come down, so we're all in uh, this great little Airbnb, yeah. which is, by the way, when you do conventions, Airbnb, yeah, baby, yeah. do it. <laughs> um, and. So here we are, we're there, and we stay an extra week, and it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. Things start shutting down, and everything's closing. We're like, oh, gosh. So we're in the Gold Coast, and we go up to Brisbane, and the family's got to fly out. We're like, okay, we're just going to take you to the airport, and you guys go. So her, her parents were like, just go. And uh, they said, you know, they're not going to fly out, so they flew out the next day. So we're staying there. We could have gone. We could have gone back home. We made the decision. And and it was a, it was a tough decision. We packed for three weeks, right? And we're like, you know what? This is an opportunity and a challenge, and we're just going to do it here because we're here, and it just feels right. You know, we go with our gut, right? So they went home. We stayed. We've got a credit from Qantas, so whenever we want to go somewhere, we can. And things just went haywire in L.A., you know. And I'm just like, we're watching this whole thing unfold, and we're sitting there. We found us a great place, a, an Airbnb, which is less – than a one bedroom apartment in K Town. Oh my gosh. A block from, I mean, right across the street from yeah. the beach. Four floors up, two bedroom, two bath, right? We're there for three months. Didn't expect it, but absolutely phenomenal and amazing. And we're watching everything unravel. And we're in literally one of the safest cities on the planet right now. Wow. Now, that was. And I, I teach this and train this and show people how this works, but that's what got us wow. here. And now we're here. We've been here for seven months. Uh, now we moved into a new place, this beautiful Airbnb. Same price. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's a resort, yeah. man. It's a freaking resort. There's a pool out there and there's a playground and all kinds of stuff. Um, and we decided we're going to stay. Mm. 
You wait, wait, you're like gonna like permanently move there? Seriously, dude? Well, here's the thing. We're not we can't fly home anyway. Right. Uh until probably what they're saying, Qantas is saying they're not flying like internationally really until maybe even July of next year. We had a visa, we got a visa extension because you can only get a three three month, yeah. right? Tourist. So we got our extension. They gave us more. So we're here till February at least. And we're like, well, if we're going to stay, you know, we talked to migration. The only way we can stay is if I become a student because Kim's got her coaching and it's rocking. My coaching is rocking. It's starting. You know, it's, I'm still building it yeah. up. But I figure culinary school. Uh... <laughs> yeah. And see, voiceover, I'm still auditioning. See, everybody's got a home rig right. now. Well, there's no problem. Right. I've got a guy yeah. who has his own his whole studio. He's a music guy, and he charges me next to nothing. He comes and picks me up. We go over there. We've already done things with a cup of tea, bang, zoom, and it's crystal clear, perfect. Wow. Like I'm right down the wow. street. So, oh, my God. That's it. So, so I figured we're staying here for a while because this is what we wanted to do. We've always wanted to travel the world with our family, go somewhere, stay for six months, maybe a year, and then go elsewhere. So we're going to stay here for a year, maybe two, and then maybe we'll go to New Zealand, Spain, Thailand. Wow. I've got, I've got my voice goes. Yes. With me. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, you know, with what people are doing virtually now, obviously coaching and public speaking doesn't have to stop. You know that that can no. continue on and on. I, no. I I think I think we're definitely getting into, you know, as much as I hate to say this because there's nothing good about, you know, that millions of people that are just not here anymore. Right. But by the same token, if it hadn't happened, we, you and I, as well as all of our other voiceover friends would never be in the position that we're in right now where it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't have to go to the studio to record. I can stay, I can go anywhere I want to go and record and still get paid for it. What? That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know, it's, uh, wow. I mean, well, it's, it's a wonderful situation and, you know, and if you do it right, you don't have to make much money yeah. to, to do this stuff. You can go somewhere. You can find an Airbnb. I found an Airbnb in like freaking Vietnam, and it's like ten dollars a day. You know, you go there and you get some really good food, uh, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get a good internet. And a lot of internet in Asia is a lot better sometimes in some, some places. And you know, it's like we're behind in LA in in many ways. And it's like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you've got the setup. So I'm going to be investing in a little bit of new setup and things because, you know, I wasn't expecting this. So I got a lot of stuff back home. Yeah. Um, Do you guys still have your place fine. in L.A.? No. See, what happened is we moved out. This is See, this is priming the pump here. We moved out a year and a half okay. ago from our place in, in K-Town. So we moved in with Kim's parents over in Burbank. Mm. So I, I even sold my car because, I mean, I can walk to the freaking studios. Right. And wow. I did. So when we came here, it's like we, we got no bills back. Mm. Uh. And this it's it's funny when you say what you mm -hmm. want, sometimes the universe gives it to you. Whether yes. That's where you're headed. That's where yeah. you want to go. You say, I want this. Your subconscious goes, yes, sir. All right. Great. And it's going to go push you that way, whether it's good or bad. And we've always said we want to travel the world. We want to raise our kids so where they learn fundamentally all about other cultures. There's no better education than travel. Mm -hmm. And you get out there and you will learn other cultures. You will be more empathetic and compassionate. You will see things that most people never see. And you come with a different mindset. And that's yeah. what we're growing. He's learning. He started learning to count. You that's know how we learn to count? One, two, three. How's he learning to count? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Yep, 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 European. yep, yep. 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 And it's it's interesting because I mean he's going to end up having an Australian accent. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's okay though. You know what? You and I have talked about this before. When when you were, I remember having conversations with you on the phone when you were starting your NLP training, and yep. um, what one of the biggest ideas that I I think always holds true is that what you focus on expands, yes. and it's it's just there there you go. 
Yep. And it's in it's what's interesting about it. There's a there's a great book I recommend to everybody, and I just started reading it like a, a year ago uh, because of a great podcast of a really really great trainer. And but the the book is old school. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy, and it's it's old school. I mean it's like. Uh, like my favorite books are low, like Science of Getting Rich and Think and Grow Rich and things of that nature that are – it's old school stuff and it's the basis of all personal growth and self-help. Mm-hmm. And when you break it down, you're like, oh my – you should see the copy we have. And there's so many lines and crinkles and flips <laughs> and full. I mean like, I, we need a new copy because damn, <laughs> this is a mess. Yeah. And it's you know it really talks about it really it really opens it up and the thing that most people don't understand is like the, this is how I think this is how I feel it's like yes. well my my point is this and this is what I teach I have a I don't know if, a, did I don't know if you knew a side note here I have a a membership group right now called the Reluctant Heroes Journey and that is uh-huh. one of the talks I've been giving at conventions now and it's all about. Uh, personal growth and self-help for our world, for the nerddom and geekdom and all of that. So it's like anybody's anime, video games, sci-fi, fantasy, board games, any of that, any of the geek world, no one's doing a personal growth self-help for them. Right. And, you know, being where we are, I was like, well, why not? I mean, I've been in front of you guys for 14 years at conventions doing the talks. Might as well turn it around because it was always about dating and, and relationship stuff early on. So now yes. I'm doing it about personal growth and self help, and I'm getting uh, a lot of a lot of people are coming in and, and starting to say, "Oh my gosh, I can actually change things." Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, and that's the point. Is like you said, what you focus on expands. It's a muscle. You have to work on it. Sometimes it takes a lot of work. I work consistently on things. I've got a lot of things that are challenges in my life, and I go, "Okay, how do I shift it?" Because I'm in charge. Right. And a lot of people are like, oh, my God, uh, you know, victim, victim, victim. It's like, no, no, you got to shift that shit. You got to do it. Ooh, can I say things like that? <laughs> yes, you can say that. <laughs> Sorry, I know there are kids on here. Damn it. <laughs> oh, it's really good. Um, fart. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's it. You have more power than you know. And I think that's that's what I'm that's my message I'm giving to our world now. I mean, I, I, I coach people business people and the six, seven figure earners and that thing too. But this is kind of a passion side for me. It's like bringing it to people that don't really have it. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing that again, opening up that group soon. So that's awesome. anyway, that's you. awesome. So uh, speaking of books, one of your probably more, m- more famous books, uh, I, I, which you've also, I think talked about as well was uh, don't kill your date and other cooking tips. How did that come about? What what created okay. the inspiration for that? All right, long story medium. I'll make it as fast as I can. I don't even know what time it is now. Um, so I went through hell to get to L.A. Right? Uh, I was married. Uh, I got a divorce, bankruptcy, lost everything, oh, literally good. everything I knew and loved, wow. um, and came to L.A. knowing four people. And I had a little bit of money, which I spent in about the first year uh, <laughs> going to those damn casting network things. And, uh, dude, you'll, you'll get this. You'll get this. I was in front of 75 casting directors and 50 agents uh-huh. in my first year. Yeah. That's where my money was. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. just did the math. <laughs> yeah. How many, how many auditions did I get? Oh. oh. Three. Oh, oh, that hurts. Yeah, that it was hurts. awful. Oh. And see, now I didn't know it at the time, but the thing was, I was toxic. Mm. I was angry. I was depressed. I was sad. I was emotional. I was in such a bad space. And I was like, well, duh. Mm. Nobody wants to be around you. Yeah. You're like that kid that has a cloud over him all the time. You know, what I should have done is just worked on myself for a year and then said, let's go. But I didn't. So, but then I started working on myself. And that's where this all came from was I started down the path. I'm like, okay, I'm 35 years old and I need to start over. Mm -hmm. And I was at my lowest. I mean, it was the worst way to end a freaking marriage, right? Yeah. And so I had to build myself up from the ground up. And I started doing, you know, what I I knew how to do was personal growth and self-help. So I hit the books. I went to consistently, I went to right there at Sunset and uh, Sunset and Vine, what was it, Borders or, or Barnes & Noble, and I would just go and start reading, you know, uh, 
power, uh, self-help, uh, dating, sex, anything, anything that would help me get better. And I started putting that into practice. But the other thing was I didn't really have a lot of money. So what did I know how to do? Cook. Hmm. So I'd invite dates over. I was like, hey, if you want to come over and hang out, that's great. I'll cook. <laughs> and it worked so well that it was crazy because I was – you know, I'm out there dating and I'm, I'm going to the bars, I'm going to different places or anything. I'm like, that sucks. I hate it. Yeah. Um, and I was training like Neil Strauss and, you know, pickup and the game and all of that. <laughs> and so I knew various levels of that. Right. But in the end, it was like, you know what? Be your authentic self, be who you are and let them come to you. And that was the idea from don't kill your date to other cooking tips. The, the self-help part of it was people are going, okay, so I cook and she comes to my place. Great. That's easy. Is it? Is it? <laughs> because you have to be the kind of man who she will come to your place to be alone, secluded with you while you wield a sharp cutting instrument. <laughs> now, so there's got to be a lot of safe. Uh, she's got to feel safe and respected and all of that. And so that's that's the whole idea <laughs> behind my my panel. Right. And it was becoming that man who is attractive. Hmm. And uh, I turned that talk into my book that is called Food Game, A Man's Ultimate Recipe for Dating Success, which is on Amazon, and it went to number one in two categories. Um, and it's a fantastic book. And look at the uh, – just look at the reviews. I got five-star reviews, and I've helped a lot of guys, uh, you know, just guys in our realm, mm. some professional people. I got a real estate investor in Portland. He's like, dude, this works, man. Wow. Um, and <laughs> – I'm like, yes, it does work. Uh, and for this crowd, I've got another book. Mm -hmm. Some of them have bought What Happens at the Con Stays at the Con. Uh -huh. Stories from the See Me Underbelly of Anime Conventions and more, Volume 1. <laughs> now, I wrote that, started in 2007 or 8, and it's it's story, short stories of crazy things that have happened at conventions. Say or may not have instigated. And um, so I wrote that and made it an audio book. So I always had CDs at cons and I would sell them, you know, here, 20 bucks, I'd sign it and there you go. You have a whole book, audio book, read by me that I wrote. Um, and now- Can somebody I, say entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. And I said, you know what? I've been, I've been teasing volume two for years. I finally did it. So I got volume two uh -huh. and I added three more long stories and I added notations at the end. It's like, okay, this story was told to me by, you know, uh, I was the one on the water slide at Eddie Van Halen's porn star party. Uh, I was, the, you know, those sorts of things. Right. Notes. Yeah. And so that's available on Amazon now as well. There you go. So cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Well, you and I have been blabbing away for a long time and I know that there are many people who have thrown in some questions, which with your permission, sir, I shall now start on. So bring it. Uh, first question comes from Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hope you're doing well today. Hey, Aaron. Uh, when it comes to mind powers, would you want Inogen tutored <laughs> by Professor X or Jean Grey from X-Men? Easy. Professor X, okay. because... Jean Grey might lose her shit. <laughs> this is true. This is true. And Professor X is a really good teacher. Yeah, so. there you go. All right. All right. He's yeah. two. One down. All right. Uh, L'Oreal, not a question. Hello, L'Oreal. Not a question necessarily, but a comment. Wanted to let you know that you rocked as Inogen. He's an artist much like myself. He's amazing. Thank you so very much. I do appreciate that. <laughs> I love doing that. Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa, who is joining us from hello, the UK. Vanessa, hello. Yes. Vanessa from the UK. All right. I love the UK. Did you originally audition for Tanizaki in Bungu or did you audition for someone else? I auditioned for everything. You auditioned for everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> i mean you know when we go into an audition there's like okay here's five male parts or 13 male parts pick the ones that you think you can do i'll just go thank you <laughs> <laughs> you audition whore oh. I'll, i audition for all of it man <laughs> and i end up getting the one i didn't even think i would get you know you come in and they're like okay you got the role i'm like i don't even know which one it is right. what are we doing yeah exactly play me my ref you know <laughs> right match that kim she actually met you 10 years ago 
at Ikasukan in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in her hometown. Super cool. And Love it. I'd like to ask you what your opinions are on the different endings of Evangelion, if you even know what the different endings are. I don't know if you have you There's ever so watched it. Endings. I I don't. You know what? I, I've I've stopped con- concerning myself with those endings years ago, because I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like wait, so everybody's gone. There's this, and if you want to know how I felt about the ending of the original mm. series, mm. Google this. <laughs> what is it? The uh, Evangelion ending, Shinji rant. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what happened at the end of the series? So we didn't. This was you know before when we had to, for example, we would do a, a show and they would mail it to Japan. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, it's on scripts. Thing they'd mail it back. So we we had two years working on this show, <laughs> uh, just the, the original series, twenty six episodes, right? Right. And near the end, it got weirder, and it was like, what the. What is this a hand? What's going on? We didn't know because Matt didn't tell us. We would come in and, like you know, Steve, we don't even, we don't know what's going on in these things anyway. But this one was particularly interesting because we had no idea what was coming on. So I'm doing my thing, and then here comes the ending. Everybody's on a big blue ball. Good. Congratulations! 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 I'm like, <laughs> what? What is that? And so I'm like, um, is that the end? And he's like, yep. I was like, can I say something? He goes, go. <laughs> and I just, I ranted. It is 100% authentic uh, organic. And it's, uh, he ended up putting it on uh, the, the VHS or something down on the DVDs. So it's there. You can get it on there. Priceless. But it, you, just, you just Google it. Uh, Shinji alternate Ava or Ava ending rant. And you'll hear it. Oh, God, Kyle. <laughs> one of our regular users and one of one of my mods always has this question for his for the voice actors that appear. So he would like what to know. Asking, Kai? <laughs> he would like to know what your favorite sandwich is. My favorite sandwich. <laughs> Ooh, B L T. Yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> Loves me a B L T, man. I mean, although I haven't had in many many years. But a really good Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Or a, a club sandwich, of course, with bacon. Mm-hmm. Those are good, uh, especially like dipped in like a honey mustard. Oh, man. Mm. <sighs> yeah. I love sandwiches. There we go. All right. Shona would like to know if there is a story behind how you, Hello, ob- how you obtained your roles for Bleach. The story behind how I obtained my roles for Bleach was I auditioned yeah. and I got it. <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Simple. Easy. Nothing super special. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing I will say uh, for the people that, that ask us at conventions all the time, they're like, you know, how do you get your roles and everything? Well, obviously we audition for them, but uh, it's not just that. It's networking, 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 networking. People say, how do I become a voice actor? Two things. It's a voice actor. Second word is actor right so take acting lessons and the second thing is network 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 yeah 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 yeah. yeah yeah exactly kite would like to know what your m- most memorable role in any anime was if you've had one my most my most memorable role in any anime so many of them are so weird um i you know the one that keeps coming up is actually one of my first ones, and I was no main character, but we had so much damn fun. It was Golden Boy, and uh, I was several little characters, and each one of them had their own little bit because Am- Amanda was just kind of like, yeah, just go. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> and she's like, just say things. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was just so much fun, a lot of crazy different characters, and then – uh yeah, I mean, they're, they're all so weird. It's like, okay, you're, today you're playing a big blue blob with teeth. Right. All right. Yeah. You know, like a blaze blue. I'm like, what is that guy? Is this, is this ghost, skeleton, spider? What is this guy? <laughs> so, uh, Luigi C. would like to know, what's your favorite... Hey, Luigi. What's your favorite episode recording for 
Evangelion was. If you had one. Anything that... The last one. The last one. I mean, you know, <laughs> or the next one. I mean, <laughs> either or. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, that one's done. We got that one done. I'm like, okay, is there another one? The next one. <laughs> See, we don't know. As far as Evangelion goes, it was the series, then three movies, then they did the whole rebuild, which is four movies, and I did the three movies. Now, Netflix redubbed everything back a year ago or so. Uh, so there's one more rebuild coming, and so we don't know if I'm going to do mm. it. I don't know. It's not my yeah. call. So if that happens, then that will be my last Evangelion for sure. Okay. Ashley, who lives in Australia... Uh, would like to know what you would do and or say if you met Shinji's father. <laughs> what I do or say, I would probably lose my shit because he's two dimensional <laughs> and not real. And I'd be like, am I high right now, dude? Because this is freaking me out. And by the way, let me smell those gloves because there's something smelling good on there because you're always sniffing those bastards. <laughs> oh, dear. Ask Adia would like to know what your favorite childhood show was if you had one. It's kind of my favorite childhood show. Uh, probably, you know, I go all the way back and this is what, what's interesting is because I, I always watched Speed Racer mm -hmm. and I always watched Ultraman. Uh, I loved those. And whenever... Uh, Whenever the movie came on, like the, the after they called it the million dollar movie, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, afternoon after school, you come home and then you watch a right, movie. Right, the after school special. That was there. Yes. Yeah. And it, like, I was always like, oh, is it Godzilla? Is it Godzilla today? You know, Godzilla was a special yeah. movie. Because it was Godzilla. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah, those were uh, fun times. Godzilla. Oh, Scooby Doo. Oh, I'm going to throw that in there. Because, yeah, I mean, back, back, oh my God, let me, I take it all back real quick. Looney Tunes. Ah, uh, for sure. blank. Yeah. All right. Shara, one of my other moderators, would like to know how it felt working on <laughs> Rainbow Butterfly Unicorn Kitty. It was awesome. <laughs> okay. So Rainbow Butterfly Unicorn Kitty. Crazy title um and it's funny because I've, I've gotten to know the producer rich and uh, he's actually gonna be one of my uh, guests on my podcast because we talk about personal growth and self-help and things and it was so much fun because it had that feel almost of looney tunes mm. and we, we we talked about that it was like it just had a fun feel and it was just kind of crazy and and uh you know and it it was a really good show yeah. and they just put it in like bad slots and different things like that so if you get a chance watch it because it's a really fun show i played a bunch of different little characters uh in including a little irishman a little a leprechaun <laughs> nice <laughs> smiles are better this is more of a comment yes oh, they are and smiles are better actually also lives in australia and met you in march can't believe that you are still in australia glad you are looking on the positive side of it all we are very lucky here oh it's absolutely fantastic and amazing I, I love it. I, it was like I said, it was a choice. It was manifested prior to, and we are we're loving yeah. it. Couldn't couldn't be better. I mean, oh my god, couldn't be yeah. better. Val from the UK, not really a question, but just wanted to say that she has enjoyed listening to you as Inogen and Snake. Why? Thank you very much. Quick thing on Snake, by the way, and this is kind of dude my own horn. Sorry, but I got to do it because <laughs> people don't know this. Uh, he has thir he has all these snakes, and I'm the voice of every one of them. So. Whenever we've gone in and and done the the recording, it was like last time I was there. I think it was me and Talison and uh, Todd, and we were like like how many voices are we up to now? He's like thirteen. Oh wow! <laughs> for this one character, I'm like cool. Nice. So yeah, I do I do all the snakes as wow, well. Wow, that's so. very cool. Nice, Ask Adia wants to know if you were hypothetically put into a killing game, mm -hmm. what would you want your ultimate talent to be? Regenerating life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's like going, you know, bam, 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 bam. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ashley would like to know: Would you try to give advice to Shinji if you met him? <laughs> if he was open to it. If he was open to it. 
Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's a coaching thing. I, I don't give advice, yeah. you know, because it's like advice. I don't know you. I don't know your car. I don't know you. I, I know nothing. I can say, here's a technique. Here's a tip. Here's a tool. I don't give advice. Hmm. You use it or you don't use it. What you do or how, how you live your life is not up to me. And I'm, I'm judge free on that. It's like that, that. That's nothing. I don't give you advice. You know what you should do? No, there's no should. I'm not shouldn't on you. Right. No, yeah, don't should. Don't should where you shouldn't. This is when I just saw, just coming in off the yeah. press, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, off the presses. Um, question for both of us. Okay. If there's anything that we would change with any of our earlier voices that we've done. Probably. <laughs> but, <laughs> but here's the thing. You know, it's our job is to make directors happy. That's right. So if they like it, know, I'm not going to change it. <laughs> That's it. I mean, so what I would do is, yes, I would change every voice I've ever done that did not get the job. Yes. There you go. And then you can get every job in the entire world forever and ever. Yes. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and you can call me Steve Bloom. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> or Troy. <laughs> it's like, damn you guys. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right. Well, something, am I allowed to share what you're planning on doing? Uh, as far as on your arm, taking over the world, on, that people know that. On your arms? Can I, can, I sh oh, sure. can I share that? Yeah. You want me to share it or you want to share it? You, no, please. Whatever. You share it. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's the thing. In Australia uh, and, and New Zealand, I'm, I'm fairly certain. I've been all over New Zealand as well. And I don't remember, but particularly, but everyone is tattooed up. And I don't mean, oh, they've got a tattoo. Look, an anchor on your arm. Hey, it's a tattoo. No, I'm talking about full sleeves, torsos, legs. I mean, men, women, doesn't matter. Necks, tattooed like crazy. I mean, literally, they probably spent $10,000 at least just on tattoos. Wow. Most everybody that I've seen. Yes. But not, not everybody, but so many people. It's, it's insane. Um, and I've got a couple of tattoos, but I've always wanted to get more tattoos. And I was couldn't figure out what I wanted to get. Um, so I've had some ideas, but being down here, it just came to me and it was, it's great because I'm a huge Monty Python fan, uh -huh. number one. Uh -huh. And, um, but what I, I want simplicity. I don't want crazy, you know, all over. So on this arm here, I'm going to get from here down, it's going to say, and now for something completely different. <laughs> And over here, it's going to say, always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> and those are going to be my two. And then I'll, I'll, I'll have more other things. I want to like my son's name and, and things like that. Right. But uh, yeah, those are my, my two biggies. Cause, and I didn't tell you this. Mm. So at, at my wedding, there was, um, uh, when we came into the reception, uh, we sang, always look on the bright side of life. And my, my best man came with the clip clop, clip clop, clip clop behind me and, and her maid of honor had the, the coconuts yes. behind and we had the crowns and we were like coming in. So Monty Python fans will get that. Yes, exactly. So it's, you know, I, I, I love, A, I love the song. And if I read uh, Eric Idle's uh, autobiography and he's talked about how that is like so popular. It's still, it's still going. I mean, it's still making lots of money and. Uh, it was just so funny because, uh, and I saw him, uh, him and uh, Eric, uh, John Cleese mm. live in Pasadena, and uh, and it's just they're amazing. It, it's just amazing. If, if anyone has not did not grow up on Monty Python, uh. I, I just I feel sorry. It's I was not too it late. Six years old. <laughs> it's not it's too late. Not too late. Watch it now. Yeah, <laughs> you can watch. They're all on Netflix. Yes, you can watch episodes of Monty Python's A Flying Circus even. It's all, there. it's all there. I mean, it, it's hard to figure out because I didn't even know what they were doing, and I knew it was funny. Yeah. I was just like, this, something's funny. I don't know what it is, but that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just knew it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just felt it, and I grew up, ah, uh, love it so much. I love all of it, and the movies are hysterical. Well, Spam a lot is based on, obviously, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Right. Um, a lot of kids don't get that. They have no idea. No idea. Yeah. So with that now, and a, lightness in our hearts, ah, I feel the lightness. Flutter, flutter. I feel good now. Flutter. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I feel better. 
Is there anything that you would like to leave our viewers with as we exit the curtain? Absolutely. So um, for everybody that is watching, uh, a couple of things. One, I would say um, if you go to my website, uh, go to the voiceover, there's a fan club sign up there. That will get you on my email list and that will, um, you got it, it's over there. It's right down there. It's right down Um, there. Right down there. There it is. Yeah. So you go to the fan club and uh, you get on my email list and that way you'll know what all's going on. And uh, right now I got a couple of things happening. One is the, the Reluctant Heroes Journey, which is the membership group. It is a membership group. It costs a little bit every month and it's coaching. Mm. It's, uh, it's, you know, I give one thing a week and one month, uh, an hour a month of, of actual coaching. And the people in there will tell you it's phenomenal. I've got testimonials after testimonial and we have a great time and, and you, you build a community mm. and, you know, and people are, are coming together and it's all supportive, hundred percent supportive. Yeah. Uh, there's no negativity and, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun and I'm opening up registration again for that in, uh, I think November. So cool. uh, if you go and get on the fan club, you'll be on the email list. So you will know when that's happening. Awesome. That's one. Um, the other thing is I am doing a master class October 16th mm-hmm. right now for some of the older uh, people here. It's called how to save your marriage during a pandemic. <laughs> Topical. Uh, and I'll be doing other master classes as well. It's free. It's live uh, online. And uh, so I'm I'm doing a lot of uh, I'm doing blogging every day right now. So if you see my Facebook uh, posts on my page, you'll see it. It says, you know, how to save a marriage series. So I'm doing a series of blogs. You can see that on my blog on my website. Uh, and that's going to be leading up to the master class on the 16th. Then after that, I'll be doing other master classes, food game, maybe some voiceover stuff, different things like that. So get on the email list. Uh, the finally is my podcast, the Mind Scrambler podcasts. Uh, I think I'm up to episode 30 five or something like that, maybe 40 now. Um, and, uh, that's available on iTunes. It's just the mind scrambler podcast. And it's all about personal growth and self-help with some silly voices thrown in from time to time, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like do. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, good for you, man. It's so good to see you. And, um, please, please, please give a big hug to Kim for me. Absolutely. And with that said, y'all, Be good humans. You know I love you guys. Keep your feet on the ground. Reach for the stars. Take care.